Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Burdick, the Reading Coach. I have a special selection for us today. A Piece of Home by Jerry Watts. Let's read. A Piece of Home. In Korea, my grandmother was a wise and wonderful teacher. When students bowed, she held her shoulders erect, but her eyes sparkled. Even at home, my grandmother could find the extraordinary held within the ordinary. Like how she coaxed her magungwa shrubs to blossom into tantrum flowers, revealing their bright red centers. In Korea, I was ordinary. A regular boy playing and laughing and bossing my little sister, Sira. I was not extraordinary, not different. I was just me like so many others. In Korea, my father, who was always did the right thing, who always did what was expected, surprised us all. He accepted a position at a law school in West Virginia. Who would expect West Virginia, he laughed, and so did my mother. I did not. In swift movements and rapid time, I found myself, my world packed into three boxes and one suitcase. Crated, nailed, and mailed to a house I'd never seen. In West Virginia, my grandmother stays at home. She does not hold her shoulders erect and her eyes don't gleam. Not at all. In West Virginia, I am not ordinary. I am different. My eyes are not big and round like everyone else's, and my hair does not tumble in thick curls or make a golden halo around my head. My new classmates smile and talk, but it is sharp noise. Their names sit like stones on my tongue. Steve. Tom. Here there are mountains, like in Korea, but the sky seems smaller and darker. I miss the lights of our city. The dark here is so black, at night I touch my eyes to make sure that they are open. But when the pale moon is full and round, it looks like my face, and a little like the face of the woman who is now my teacher. My teacher is nice. She tries to help. She speaks slowly, as if I am stupid. Lips snapping over sounds my mouth will not make. I try to say I don't want to be here. She nods a lot and smiles, but she knows that I do not understand. And I know she does not understand. Sira also does not understand. Recess is over, and she bites and kicks and even spits on her teacher. My grandmother cries and tries to tell the teacher she is sorry. Then my father talks to the school in his flawless English. It is decided that my grandmother will go to school with my sister to give her a bit of ordinary. She is having a hard time adjusting, but I have no help. I wish I were little enough or brave enough to bite and kick and spit. Days become weeks and weeks become months. I learn bathroom and please. I am surprised that I can form words that make their meaning clear, though they still feel like stones, heavy in my mouth. They work though. Play with me, like in Korea. Pass it back, like in Korea. Grandmother is learning, too, along with Sira. At dinner, she tells us about the other children in Sira's class and about their young teacher, newly engaged, who helps my grandmother with English at nap time. And my grandmother, with halting words, gives her advice. One day in May, Steve says, He, Jun, come over. My first visit to a friend. In his yard, I discover a red-centered blossom. Magungwa, I say. 
Rose of Sharon, Steve says. It's Magungwa in Korea, I say. It is Rose of Sharon here, Steve says. When I leave, Steve's mother gives me Magungwa blossoms and a tender shoot to take back home. A piece of heaven, Grandmother says. A piece of home. Here, it is called Rose of Sharon. A piece of home. My grandmother plants the shoot, and at the end of the summer, she takes one of the Magungwa blossoms and sews it onto the wedding dress of a teacher friend, like our family does in Korea. And I can say, Steve, come over, like a bubble on my tongue. And that is ordinary in our new home. I hope that you enjoyed our selection today. A Piece of Home by Jerry Watts. Happy reading, and this is Mrs. Burdick out.